invasion has happened, what do I do? How do I know what cells to attack? Thankfully, your second line of defense can actually distinguish between normal cells and cells that are, frankly, invaders. So if pathogens get into your body, we need to quickly attack just the pathogens. We don't want to harm healthy, normal body cells in the process. You've actually got a system that's able to determine what is self and what is non-self. A self cell is just any normal cell that you have in your body. We determine these based on these things called antigens on their surface. Now antigens are not the only thing that help determine whether a cell is normally found in your body or whether we've got some foreign cells getting in or we've got a new pathogen trying to take over. Any cell that has a nucleus in your body have these things called MHC markers. What does this even mean? Well, MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. They're a series of proteins that are anchored on your cell membrane and they communicate with passing white blood cells. Like any protein that we have in our body, MHC are created by your genes. So we've got genes that code for this protein, which then gets made into mRNA. We read this and make it into a protein, and this gets shuttled out to the surface of your cell. Remember, you do inherit all of your genes from your parents. So your MHC markers that you have on your cell surface are actually a combination of mum and dad. So whatever markers that they have, you'll have a 50-50 combination of them on your cells. MHC are going to be a pretty unique combination on your cells. You do have a pretty close relationship to your MHCs with your siblings. Um, so this is why when we actually do organ donations, it's better to get your organs from your siblings. Wait, that sounded weird. Don't like harvest the organs of your siblings. But if you need a transplant, like they're the best source for it. They are also a combination of your parents, hopefully. So if you're, you know, let's go back. If you're related to your siblings, then they'll share the same MHCs most of the time as what you have. So if you do have organs taken from them, you're less likely to reject them because your white blood cells aren't gonna see the MHC on these transplanted cells as foreign and they won't attack it. So if we look at MHC, we've got two classes of them. We've got class one and surprisingly class two. Oh my gosh, a straightforward name in biology? <gasps> Amazing. Class one MHC are found in any cell that has a nucleus. So if you actually think about it, there are some cells in your body that don't have MHC class 1. Do you know what they are? Let's try it with a multiple choice quiz. Did you get the answer? Indeed, it is a mature red blood cell. As a red blood cell matures, it does lose its nucleus and these cells don't produce MHC markers that go on their cell surface. This is why you can actually get a blood donation from a lot of people um, and we don't have to screen for MHC markers of red blood cell products um, because there's like little risk of rejection. MHC class 2 are found on certain cells in your second and third line of defense. They're found on what we call antigen presenting cells which link the second line and third line and and they were also found on B cells. MHC are also known as HLA because biology was not complicated enough. We needed another system of words. Um, HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen system. So all of your cells are going to be recognized by your white blood cells, which are leukocytes, and they're looking for antigens on your cell surface. Antigens are little protein, like sort of name tags, little like cellular products that are being um, shuttled out to the surface of your cell and they kind of communicate like what's going on inside of your cell. So if your cell's like completely healthy, it's completely normal, what you might communicate with passing white blood cells are, these are the proteins I'm currently making inside of my cell, I'm completely happy, I'm completely healthy, please don't kill me. Now, if your cells are producing something like a viral protein, you've gotten invaded by a virus, things are going wrong. What this is, is like a little signal to your the police, essentially. It's like a hostage situation inside of your cells from the virus, and you're trying to send little smoke signals out to communicate with the police. So you might be sending a little signal out to your cell surface going, there's a virus inside right now. 
This is its antigen. This is what we're looking for. Save yourselves. MHC and antigens work together. An antigen is going to be held up on an MHC. So an MHC just kind of hangs out on the cell surface. Antigens are held in the MHC itself. So if you have a foreign antigen on your cell, a passing white blood cell will come along, see this antigen on this MHC going, this is a normal MHC, but this antigen is foreign, we're gonna kill that thing. You can also have a foreign MHC, but like it's producing pretty normal antigens that you generally find in cells. But if a white blood cell comes along, it's going to try to connect to the MHC and antigen complex, see that the antigen's all good, nothing's going wrong, but the MHC is foreign, and that is a signal to kill your cell. So we need MHC markers and antigens to basically display information saying, this is a normal self cell. This is a healthy cell. Don't kill me, please. So if your MHC or your antigen is foreign or not normally found in your body, that's a signal for your passing immune cells to trigger what we call apoptosis. Apoptosis is a controlled cell death process. So anytime you have a foreign cell, we can trigger apoptosis by white blood cells, releasing signals and basically killing those cells that we have that are foreign. The white blood cells responsible for triggering organ rejection, we've got a couple. We've got what we call a natural killer cell, and that's actually part of your second line of defense. And we've got these things called cytotoxic T cells. Cytotoxic T cells are actually part of your third line of defense. They're a very sophisticated cell, but they do need to go through a few processes before they're activated. Organ transplants are really common. It's really important to screen for MHC markers on transplanted organs. Organ transplants, they can go wrong. So we might not have screened for the right MHCs properly, or sometimes, you know, that organ, it's not great, or it might have a secret cancer cell. Lots of lots of different weird things can happen. So if we have a rejected organ, we're triggering cell death. The cells of that organ will progressively die. It's no longer functional, and we're going to have pretty gross looking things. If you really do need an organ though, and you don't really have another option, we might still transplant some organs that don't quite match up as much as we'd like. And what you'll need to take is an immunosuppressant drug. Immunosuppressants will leave someone immunocompromised. This means that they're not gonna react the same way against a normal pathogen as you and I might. They are at higher risk, they're very vulnerable. So an immunocompromised person needs to take care about who they come in contact with, but also in times where we have pandemics, they are the ones that we really need to protect by not unwittingly spreading a disease to them. If a pathogen invades, it will display its own surface antigens or its own proteins on their cells or whatever they have. They might not be cells, to be fair. Um, and your cells can react against these as well. If a cell's been infected by a virus, it's been hijacked. It's making all of these viral particles that are free to now just burst out of this cell and infect other cells. Now, a viral infected cell will try to communicate with nearby cells to basically say, I'm hijacked, things are gonna go wrong, please save yourselves. If you're a virally infected cell, you might release out something called interferon. Interferon is a cell signal. So we have this class of cell signals called cytokines. Cyto just means cell, kind just means proteins, um, which are proteins that spew out of cells and communicate with nearby cells. We have cytokines that communicate between white blood cells to let them know what's happening with an infection, but we also have cytokines that get released out in times of stress. If you're a virally infected cell, guess what? You're pretty stressed. You're gonna be spewing out lots and lots and lots of interferon to nearby cells. If interferon binds to a nearby cell, it's going to signal a lot of different things inside of that cell to help it guard itself against infection. If a virus does make its way into a cell that's kind of been warned by interferon beforehand, it's going to have a lot of reduced protein synthesis. So that virus is not able to replicate as it should, and it's not really able to continue its life cycle as quickly as it should. A bunch of interferon being released out by a viral infected cell is also a trigger for a natural killer cell. Natural killer cells are a type of lymphocyte, so these are cells that we typically see in the third line of defense. However, natural killer cells actually play a role in the second line of defense as part of your innate immune system. 
Natural killer cells will respond pretty much the same way to any infection and it's not as specific as what we see in the third line of defense. A natural killer cell is called that because it's able to kill pretty quickly and it doesn't really need the usual processes of antigens and MHC to trigger it. A natural killer cell will trigger apoptosis. Apoptosis is cell suicide, so a normal cell will have a general life cycle, it'll need to die eventually, or if you've got an infected cell, something's going wrong, or malfunctioning in a cell, will trigger apoptosis to kill that cell and get it out of the way. Apoptosis can be triggered by two different pathways. We've either got the intrinsic pathway, which triggers apoptosis from within. So if we've got like DNA damage, UV radiation, something's going wrong inside of that cell, we can trigger the death of the cell from within. The extrinsic pathway is how a natural killer cell is going to work, however. If a natural killer cell senses signals of cell stress, such as interferon, it's going to become activated and it is going to bind what we call a death ligand or a little protein that it has on its cell surface essentially um, and that's going to bind to a death receptor on your cells and that triggers apoptosis of that cell. So if you've got a viral infected cell a natural killer cell will come by basically touch that, that viral infected cell and it's going to trigger the death of that cell from within. Natural killer cells can also induce lysis of a cell which means breaking um, by releasing enzymes. These enzymes basically punch holes into a cell. The cell contents are going to leak out and that's going to kill it. It's like you've stabbed the cell. It's going to die. What's really really important are your white blood cells being able to go around all of your cells, come in contact with them and get a read of what's going on. So thanks to this amazing system of self and non-self markers, your MHC and your antigens, we're able to work out what cells should stay in the body and which cells are malfunctioning or which cells are foreign.